come over here to uh, this crossbow. So I showed you at the very beginning, I, I kind of worked on this little crossbow um, here. I'm just going to load this into my view. Um, and so um, again, I'm kind of stepping forward just a little bit fast. Again, I'll, I'll back up and we'll go more into how this works uh, on a step-by-step -step basis in a second. But uh, basically, we have these maps. So we talked about uh, PBR, uh, the Disney BRDF model. I'm just going to scroll here into uh, my graph. And so the first thing we're looking at here is we've got, well, here, let's just fit this to view. We got our diffuse. Um, here's our roughness map and our metallic map. So let's just talk about the two different maps here. So we have roughness and metallic. And th again, this is the, uh, the Disney BRDF model. So we're dealing with these two types of maps. Now the other type, like I said, is specular glossiness. So basically the way this works, roughness is basically controlling, you know, well, how rough is the surface? And then the metal map is saying, hey, is something metal or is it not? And so this is one way to work. Now the other way, like I said, um, is using specular and glossiness. Now we actually have a new filter in 421, which is actually really interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, microphone's kind of in the way I couldn't see it. So here we go. Um, come over here to your material filters and come to transforms. You'll see this diffuse metallic roughness. We actually have this filter that will convert these guys for us. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this here into the graph. And uh, I'm in multi-graph, or excuse me, um, compact material mode. So you can see that all of my channels are being uh, basically compressed down to this single, um, this single output here. Again, if we come up to the top, you can see that I'm in compact material mode. We can easily switch between them by using these hotkeys. And so, like I said, we've got uh, this little node here, which is piping out our textures. All I have to do is just feed this here. And so then I'll just double click. And now you can see that we now have been converted from one PBR model to the other. Now, what I like I said before, I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna click uh, this button here, material, or I could hit two uh, on the number pad here. And let's just view these outputs. So with these outputs here, I can actually just, you know, well, we don't care about the diffuse, we know what that is. Uh, let's look at the specular. So now we have a specular map. Instead of working with that, that metal map or that roughness map, we now have specular. So if we kind of zoom in on here, this is what the specular map looks like. And then here we have a glossiness. So now we have these two maps here that are control um, our specularity or our, our color of our specularity. So the main difference is like, uh, you know, our specular, this is gonna hold specular value and specular color. So like for metals and stuff, we would actually have a color tint to this. And then glossiness again is gonna be kind of like our roughness uh, where it's kind of just describing, you know, basically the, um, the I guess sort of like the porous surface of, of the mesh itself. We'll just say roughness. And then here's our metallic map. So this is basically just a binary map, black, white, is it metal or not? Uh, and then we have our roughness basically describing again the same basically the same as our glossiness. So we have this uh, system here that can convert. Uh, we will have a way to go back if you want to. Right now it's basically converting from Disney BDRF to specular glossiness. Uh, in 4.3 we'll actually have a node that goes you know, the other way if you want to. So, But anyways, I just wanted to use this to kind of illustrate the difference in the map. So specular glossiness or metallic roughness. And again, we're gonna concentrate on metallic roughness because I, I kind of feel like that's the kind of the best route to go. So we'll just kind of move that node on off to the side here. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about how how this actually works. So let's come over here to this little examples. Uh, let's grab our sphere. Uh, we'll just load this here. And so when we start Substance Designer, we want to go ahead and kind of start with a graph, right? So we'll come over here to File and we'll say, uh, well, here let's do this. We already have a package here. Let's right click and say File New Graph. And now we have our little graph wizard here. And then at the top, we have this little template. And so we have standard, and by default, standard's giving us just, you know, diffuse, normal, and specular. But now we actually have these other templates. One's physically based metallic roughness, and the other's physically based specular glossiness. So there's our two models that we were just talking about. So in our case, we're gonna do metallic roughness, and you can see here that it just creates for us our two outputs. So diffuse, roughness, metallic, and normal. And then I could go ahead and click okay on this, and it's gonna create our outputs. So I actually already have that here. So we have our outputs. If we go ahead and select this output node, you can come over to the usage and see what's defined here. So let's look at our roughness. So we select roughness. We come over to uh, the properties here. The usage is set to roughness uh, type here and same with metallic. So we're set to metallic. And so we have these map types. 
So now that we have these map types, we would then just go through the process of just authoring our maps so that we can then basically feed these outputs. And that's how you know we really kind of work with the, the graphs here. So the graphs uh, are really not going to be too much different in the sense that you know you're really just working with either specular glossiness or metallic roughness. All the other ways that you work with substance are the exact same. Now the other difference though is this is our map kind of portion or equation to, or excuse me, the kind of like the, the process here is our map side. Now the other process of this equation here is our shader. So over in the 3D view, if we come over here to materials, uh, right underneath default, with, this was just a default sphere, so that's what the material was called. We come over to shader. We now have two shaders here. One is physically based and the other is physically specular glossiness. So depending on what model that you're working with, you're going to want to switch between uh, one of these two here. And so uh, we'll leave this at, at uh, our physically based. And so uh, just as a quick demo, uh, we can see that, okay, well, we have uh, this diffuse. I have this little node here um, that I have, and uh, let me go ahead and uh, just show you that. And I can actually share this with you. But uh, basically, this is just a little helper node that I have uh, that basically lets me pick uh, like presets of materials or metals. So for instance, if I want to work with copper, I have this guy selected, and I select uh, copper here. And now I have, uh, you know, the the actual uh, reflectance value for copper set up for me. I'm going to explain that a little bit more in detail in just a minute. But just so you know, I did, that's what I did, and I just fed that into the diffuse. I'm kind of glossing over this a bit just because on the next slide is where we're going to really get into the whole texture guideline part. But uh, basically, I just want to show you how the surface and stuff works. So there, we just set basically a diffuse value. I've got a couple uniform colors here, so we'll hit our space bar. We come down here to uniform color. And then these guys are set to grayscale. So both of these are grayscale maps. So roughness and metallic are both just grayscale. So we've got uh, our roughness. We just feed that in. And then we have our metallic. So in the case of roughness and metallic, uh, this is pure metal. So I'm going to come over here and just, it's just full white. Um, again, more on this in just a minute. And then my roughness. So you can see that right now we got a pretty rough surface. Let's just pull this down a little bit more towards black. And now you can see that as I start to do that, I'm introducing, you can actually see as we start to make the ob object more smoother, we're starting to see uh, more uh, focused uh, reflective highlights here in our surface. Uh, so we have this in place. Uh, like I said, roughness is king. So if we wanted to right now, we're just using a, a value, really, uh, just a simple grayscale vi value to drive our roughness. But if we wanted, we could come over to something like noises. And we could grab one of these noises and just drag and drop this guy in. And uh, let's go ahead and just plug this noise here into that roughness. And so now you can see that uh, this is what we get here. So you can see that uh, I'm not messing with the metallic channel at all, but really what I'm doing here is I'm just messing with the roughness. And so we could actually come in and grab this. I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm going to go to levels. Now I have a little levels control here. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I'll just kind of zoom here in the 2D view. I like to use this little information box here. And I can kind of just, you know, scroll around here with my mouse and kind of sample some values and see what's going on. So um, in this case, we have some, some the white being something that's going to be really rough. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just keep this kind of black, and I might just pull down that roughness here. So my output white, just grab hold of this guy, and I'll pull this down. So you can see where I'm just changing that output white there. And so I'm lowering it, but I have some nice noise and some, you know, some breakup pattern there to that roughness. And so here's what we kind of get. And you kind of get some really nice, you know, realistic results very quickly. And all I did right there was just mess with, uh, I just set a color value uh, and uh, just took a noise and threw it into my roughness and I'm ready to roll here. And so... That's basically just all you have to do to work with uh, PBR inside a Substance uh, Designer. Uh, Substance Designer is basically its entire system is, is working around this. So another thing about PBR that I will say is that we're working with um, a linear rendering system. So basically we're working with like gamma corrected values and things like that. And all that's taking place here within side of Substance Designer under the hood. So for instance, we have this base color. Uh, that's picked with a color picker, so by default it would have some gamma encoded value, but here you can see down here S, uh, RGB, if we turn this on and off, you can see the different value we're getting. So this is basically taking this value and, 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 and looking or linearizing it so we can view this correctly. Uh, and then right here, if we turn that off, you can see that, you know, that's not being corrected. So we're almost looking at a double gamma value here. So anyways, just to bring to the point that with physically based rendering, we're working with floating point values. We're working with uh, a linear pipeline. And Substance Designer has all this built into it. And a lot of this is going on under the hood. And so, again, you know, we're just setting our outputs. 
we're coming over here to our materials and we're setting up the appropriate shader and you're ready to rock. So you kind of have an idea of how that works, but we still haven't talked about the texture guidelines, but which really is what this course is going to be about. So uh, real quick, let's do the same thing over here in Substance Painter. I want to talk a little bit about this as well. So Substance Painter, how does it work in here? Well, Substance Painter is all PBR to start. So if we come over here to our viewer settings, you can see mode. We don't have any other modes. All we have is PBR, and like I said, uh, by default, we're working with the roughness and metallic. So Substance Painter, if we wanted to, we could actually change these. So I could actually remove these channels here if I wanted. And I could come over here and click this little plus button. And I could add, if I wanted to, specular and glossiness if you want to work with that. Now, maybe your engine or your shaders uh, work with that that uh, that other mode. There's no problem. One's not really better than the other other than personal preference. So you know you can actually set that up to work. And so uh, what I'll do in this case is uh, let's go back and do that same thing. So let's go ahead. I have my fill layer here applied. I'm just going to select this copper. So now we have this copper applied. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just create a new layer. And I'm going to come over to my brushes and maybe grab a little bit, uh, maybe some dirt here. And then I'm going to come over here to uh, my tools. And so right now we have some channels active. We have diffuse, roughness, and metal. Well, I don't want to paint on the diffuse, and I don't want to paint on the metal. I only want to work with my roughness. So I'm going to set just like a roughness value here. I'm going to increase my brush size, and now I can just start to paint some roughness across the model here. So again, just like we did with the noise in Substance uh, Designer, we're doing the same thing here in Substance Painter, except uh, we're doing it really cool and painterly like. So, um, so there we go. We're throwing that in. Uh, something else that we can do with this is... Um, here, I'll tell you what, looks pretty good. Let's come over here to some scratches. I'm just going to grab this little scratch brush here. I'm going to pull my size up, and I'm just going to put some nicks in this guy. And let's make sure that we're at, uh, let's up our resolution here. There we go, that looks better. And so I'm just putting in some scratches across this, stuff like this. You know, just, again, like I said, roughness is king. Roughness is where you're going to get truly artistic with all of your surfaces and things like that. Okay, so now we have this little, this we painted some roughness here. Let's come over to this layer. Let's select the roughness channel. And now I'm just going to grab my opacity slider, and I can even control it here as well. So, you know, maybe I got that value set wrong incorrectly. Um, I can change it up here. Now, one of the things with roughness is, a little a, a tip about this is, you know, you can't mess up the roughness really. I mean, there isn't a right or wrong. There isn't a, that's not rough, or that's, you know, there, there isn't a right or wrong in this. This is very, very much an artistic approach to this piece. And so, um, you know, if you need to tweak it like that, you, you, you can. But it's really cool. So if I start to kind of just look around, you can see, um, if we just kind of zoom in where that highlight is, as I start to kind of, you know, um, orbit this uh, this little globe here around. You can see how, you know, that the scratches are affecting those highlights and stuff like that. So that's in my, uh, um, that's actually happening in my roughness channel. Now, uh, if we come over here to our modes again, we have the ability to look at solo mode. Uh, the best way to handle that is just to hit C on the keyboard. So here's our channels again. And uh, this is all